peace. It's Sunday the 1st, making today's math knowledge. Knowledge is the foundation of all things in existence. Knowledge is infinite. Use your knowledge daily. Peace. Peace. What up, though? Welcome back. You know what I mean, Godcast? I'm Lord Jamal. I'm Digger Digger. And uh, back for another week yeah. of lively commentary and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, great hip hop banter. That was great. We got to do that like all the time. Yeah, you're looking very golden, I should say. Oh, thank Not you. Not that you, you don't usually look golden. I'm but, extra um, golden today. You're looking extra golden today because I think we should let the people in on a little secret. Okay. The last um, two episodes were pre-recorded, right? Like simultaneously, yes. In order for Digger to a to be able to go to <laughs> Miami <laughs> hey. and leave the rest of us here up in the north, and oh, she got some pictures she's gonna put up from her trip, and I saw your Instagram. I know. And you look like you was having a good time. I know. I was showing my you, ass you in Miami. Showing your ass in Miami. I saw. Look, blame Lil Kim. Mm. <laughs> mm, exactly. Okay. That's the impact. <laughs> Shut up. No, it's not. <laughs> wait. You wait. Was, I'm, you, I bet you was making an impact out there. How? Wait. How about? Um. So I got people in my. So what we've been doing for the past two weeks is we just been like you know observing all the commentary. Uh -huh. A couple things I want to say about the comments. Um. First of all, guys, don't worry. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not scared of him. I okay. Don't, I don't care how loud he get. I don't care how rude he get. I'm just going to sit here and eat my food and be right. How many times and, I cut and, you off? And objective. <laughs> he could be loud and subjective over there, uh -huh. but uh, we good over here, guys. I ain't got to worry about nothing. And the Mr. Cutter offer. <laughs> yes uh i do cut motherfuckers off i know i'm guilty of that and if you were here i'd probably cut your motherfucking ass off too um but yes i i will definitely strive to you know be more uh you know astute and 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 conscious of that but i'm just one of those motherfuckers that you know what i mean just like, passionate. like yeah i'm passionate and i just kind of know how to dominate a conversation like like and that's just, you know, uh, it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse. It's understandable. But, but your 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 input, of course, is is come on. That's why you're here. It's so valued. That's and, right. And, and needed and wanted and you know, definitely and, and, and just know, guys, like when this when we when the cameras are off, we just key keying up a storm. Like don't think that there's any like real like This is sis right here. <laughs> yeah, like now it's, but, it ain't but, never but, about but you know nothing. it's funny, like like the episode where it said, oh, temperatures rise. And, you know, <laughs> that got a lot of fucking views, that episode. Like, isn't it funny how negative shit or what appears to be negative gets more attention than if the, if the, if the shit said, like, you know. Lord Jamar and Rod Digger had a love fest, like, like you know, <laughs> they we were just so buddy buddy, like that's not gonna fucking get mad clicks. But oh shit, temperatures rising. Let me see what the fuck they was talking about. Like, it just seems like I'm not gonna say the nature of people, but people are just really conditioned to just be attracted to what they perceive as negative as opposed to positive. This is true. One thing I and you know what's funny when you're watching things back and mind you we we've had about 2 weeks to just kind of analyze the you know the show and read the comments. Something that I that I wish I would have said in that moment. Okay. Um you know, we we spent a great deal talking about Little Kim's impact. Right. And I felt that your your stance on that was subjective. Thank you. Thank you. If I may make a suggest a subjective statement mm -hmm. point i would like to say i feel like she was one of several you know dominating successful women at that time and i don't i don't think you know it's fair to put it on her like she single-handedly you know uh perversed female rap if you will 
I think that women play more up to what men, what they think men want. For instance, if we're talking about female rappers, like even yourself in all of your glory, you cannot bring up a female rapper's name without mentioning what she looks like or her level of sexiness. And I think these are the things no, yes, that, I can. that women take yes, into I consideration. Can. No, 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 no. I don't think I bring that up. I think people were saying you were bringing that up. What I bring up about women is their content okay just like no no we can go to the videotape let, let me let me let me explain i said it's the themes women's themes that i that don't appeal to me just like white boy themes don't appeal okay to me. yes as a black man i want to hear shit about other black men and what black men are going through i don't want to hear the themes that women it's not necessarily no. how they Correct. look you said that you said that but when we talk about female rappers when i does that have something to do with it but i think that has something to do with male rappers too when, when we when nobody we, wants a corny looking when we male mention rapper. female rappers names it, it usually comes with something in regards to her looks and i to me personally as a woman as a female rapper I think that plays the biggest role in how women put themselves together and present themselves. I think that plays a role in, in all artists. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm not going to. MC Light got to be a full adult. That's when she started really. And now you're looking like, like a fox. And now she a damn cover girl out this <laughs> motherfucker. Like for real. Like girl with that pie. ponytail and all that, something about her was. A little sexy. You see what I'm saying? Like, I remember liking Roxanne Shantae. Like, that's what I was telling her. Mm. You remember me giving you those fucking telepathic vibes up the wheels <laughs> that night? <laughs> Antoinette. Antoinette was high. Yeah, Link Q was dope. And she was, she was bad. She was bad. Yeah, Link Q was bad. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. But, but that that's now, that's, now, that's the subjective point. From okay. from you know from my scope, duly noted. But we're not going to spend too much duly time noted. on that because there's been a shitload of shit going on. Oh my goodness! Let's <laughs> let's let's get right to into it. Um, firstly, let's talk about the young brother that got murdered. Now, this is probably going to be a little older by the time it comes out, but we still need to we talk still about need this. to address it. Um, the young brother that just was murdered, uh, XXX Tentacion. Um, and for and for the record, two rappers actually were murdered. Right, another brother from Pittsburgh. I think it was uh, J Jimmy Wapo. Jimmy Wapo, correct. Uh, and that's funny how that's things can happen, and, and shit will get overshadowed just by mere fame. Right. Like Farrah Fawcett died, died the same, same day, day as Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson, but ain't nobody really talk about Farrah Fawcett except for five minutes until Michael Jackson died and then nobody was talking about him so no more. So rest in peace to Jimmy Wapo. Rest in peace to uh, XXS Tentacion. I think his name was uh, something on Freud, uh, something Dwayne on Freud. Anyway, um, it you know, when it happened, first of all, I was with my son when it happened, and he seemed pretty shaken up when he saw the video, as was I. Like, here it is. You have a young man sitting in his, in his vehicle, murdered, and people are just basically just... With their cameras. Yeah, like, like it's just a circus. Like, they're filming it. One person had the presence of mind to even check his pulse but other than that you know I, it's just very disturbing to me images of young original people being murdered and we have to have these frames of references in our minds like like ah oh, it's very disturbing and it, I, it, it, it speaks to a lot about the society that we're in that right we're now. in and you know and this this the the video the posting and the internet and and it's also disturbing how um aside from being desensitized to it at this point because we see so many images of murdered brothers um i also am a ta little taken aback by a lot of the negative commentary going on you know a lot of uh, people are 
you know, they're looking at, I guess, the life he led and, and things that uh, that he mistakes that he made and, and, and just shit that he did. Like, OK, we OK, he wasn't a saint. Fine. But right. at what point does, you know, can we not take a minute to step back and say and, and feel compassion for a young man? Tw- actually, a child. He's 20 years old. Like us in our 40s, people that are fans that are watching this, we have children the same age as this guy. And yes, legally, he's a grown man. But for the most part, he's still a child. He was dealing with legal issues that, you know, for things that he did, for crimes he committed as a teenager, you know, he still had a, a he still had to face the justice system. He still, you know, he still had to pay for those things. But to not even ha- care enough to feel like, damn, you know, he was murdered like he was gunned down like he was shopping for scooters. And and, and I just think is I just think it's was, real. what he was doing. He yeah. was shopping. For he was scooters. shopping for a scooter. He, he had a big bag of cash motorcycle. Mm. motorcycle. Yep. He was outside of a motorcycle shop. And um, they feel it was a a, a targeted robbery. They so probably could, yeah, they knew he what they, he was right. So out you there know the, the young boys they they got the bag. First of all, oh, not to cut you off. No, no. But <laughs> what's all this? Why are we running around with bags of money all the time? Like there's something these days called a fucking credit card. Okay, that like if somebody took your fucking credit card as much harder for them to get that paper off of there than to take your bag of money you know with a hundred thousand dollars inside your louis bag or whatever the fuck you got like why are you doing this like like because they have frame of references of other so-called rich niggas doing this type of shit and and Look at the consequences. And we're just in a society where, like, these kids are brainwashed. Like, they're too busy recording the moment to live it. It's like, if it if you don't post it, if you don't see a post about it, it didn't happen. So, I don't know. It's like, like they just have to show people that they have money. Like, I, from where I come from, you know, motherfuckers with money was quiet. <laughs> Even a cashier's check, bruh. You ever heard of a cashier's check? I mean, it's, you know, that that's unfortunate. And actually, both of these artists were murdered in their hometowns, which, you know, which speaks volumes for, you know, you, you guys, y'all, you, you're getting these deals. You, you're getting these multi-million dollar deals. You really can't. You're, you're tr- doing the trolling thing on the Internet. Like, you really can't run around like shit is sweet. Like, I... I I think this is going to be a big wake up call for, you know, for the Takashis. I mean, already he's he's he's, he's on a- line damn near apologizing for all the shit he was. And tomorrow's not promised, you know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes someone someone might get the wrong image of me. You could be here today and be gone tomorrow. And, and did you see the post? He actually posted a conversation between himself and Tentacion. Tentacion no. Tentacion's last words to him was, yo, it's a good thing you squashed that beef. Move smart. Be safe. Don't, you know, don't let your guard down. Like, those were XXX's last words and then he's to Takashi. Like, and it's funny because, you know, in the back of a lot of people's minds, like, let's keep it real. Some people might not want to say this, but... A lot of people are expecting something to happen to this kid, Takashi. And I think that part of what's so so surprising about this is that it happened to this guy and not him. Yo, I took a nap. I took a like, like I took a, I took a nap and 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 woke up and and niggas was like, "Yo, guess who got killed?" For I swear to God, first thing I said was Takashi. They like no, and that's a Tentacion. fucking shame. I'm like, wow, that's a shame. it's like it's like we're almost expecting it, but. I, you know, I, I don't wish that I am, Absolutely I not. am a firm believer of, you know, karma and, and the energy you put out there. And, you know, Tentacion didn't really put, you know, like I'm a killer type energy out there, but he did talk a lot about death. He talked yes. a lot about suicide. Gloomy. Yeah, it was. Energy. You know. And when you have that type of energy around you, yes, you're going to you don't want to. You don't want to speak those things into existence. But it, it, death doesn't just come in gangster talk. You understand what I'm saying? And in in the times we living in, with all these 
pharmaceuticals. They're trying to put you in a mind frame of depression, right. you know, and, and, which is not something that black people, you know, we might suffer from it maybe, but we're not, we've gone through some shit as a people. That any other people would have been super depressed, jumping out of windows and all kind of shit. Yet we persevere and keep moving forward. Like su- suicide is not the answer for us. You we, understand? We, 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 perse- we persevere, but I also think we minimize uh, how bad it does affect our community. Like, you know, on one on one side of the scope, it, it's suicide. On another side of the scope, it's homicide. It's like it's it, it's still all, you know, there's tied many into... different symptoms to trauma. Exactly. Exactly. And we have we as a people have suffered major trauma. Um, but it's like. All of this sad talk and and just depressed talk. And, oh, my friends are dead. It's just like yes. it's just a, it's you You're know setting yourself up for failure. Like it's like, like it's just that it's just that their energy and and you know it's unfortunate. Yo, I, I mean at the end of the day, th- this was somebody's son. Like he, to my understanding, you know he has been on you know trying to turn his life around. Like I heard he was the he, start. He started some challenge like. Basically, some positive, yeah, you know, like a, do shit for people. Where Drake, right. I heard his whole video was based kind of on this challenge, right? That um, you, well, you know, they actually beefed at one point, right? Because he, he felt like you know, and you got people out here almost trying to b- blame Drake, possibly for what happened to this guy. Oh, like, that, there's a lot of so many conspiracy theories out on the internet. First of all, within, the the, within, the fans are fa- are solving the crime themselves. Within an hour, it seemed yeah, like people are comparing him to Tupac. You got people trying to solve the crime, like this guy is soldier kid with the red mask. It, like it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Um, you know, rest in peace to him, though, and and I mean, rest in peace to him. Absolutely, I just hope that you know. For a lot of people in this generation, this could be a wake-up call for them, you know? Because I think for a lot of us, you know, Biggie and Tupac was a wake-up call in a way right. for, you know, Absolutely. the people of our generation. And I, like, and, like, hold up, this ain't just fun and games. And I don't really know XXX to have a lot of beefs. I know that the, the two main ones I know about, I know one time he was knocked out unconscious on stage. Like, somebody literally jumped on the stage and, like, knocked him out. And um and he was jumped by the Migos. Like other than that, like I didn't, I didn't, you know, I don't really, I with people like people's personal stuff and all that internet stuff, the trolling stuff. I don't really subscribe to that. Like I just go straight to the music. The he was a talented kid. He he was a talented kid. He definitely had, you know, he he definitely had a a, a musical future ahead of him. Um and in time he probably would have paid for his crimes and and just grew to be a big person it's like where's y'all compassion like i don't even know what his crimes were really yeah you said something domestic about maybe, abuse yeah, and, yeah. and listen you know, but I, and i'm not and i'm not making that a small thing absolutely because not that, but is somebody does somebody deserve serious. to die he did not de- like 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 he did not deserve to is get, it justifiable for you to sit back and say well good, good for him yeah good like, for him because he beat his girl that's like that's, especially as a teenager think of all the foul shit that we've done right all of us as as we were growing up as right. children if you had to be held accountable for all the dumb shit you did as a teenager now right oh my goodness it would be We'd all be fucked, probably. Exactly. Like, like. I, I said. I said the same thing. I said, imagine if every skeleton of every artist that you idolize uh, were to come be out. Be glad there wasn't cameras the way there there is today, baby. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot more motherfuckers would be caught for right. a lot of shit. Back in the days, uh, the, right. the famous shit was. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's all you got to say. Wasn't me. They can't do that now, though. Like that shaggy shit was everything. real. It wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really here to for where the, you can mind the fuck the sele- a motherfucker. The selective outrage. It's like okay, either <laughs> either we gonna be pissed off at everybody in the industry, or like just like shut the fuck up. Either you like their music or you don't. He without sin. Let he cast the first stone, whatever the fuck it says <laughs> <laughs> in the motherfucking Bible. Uh, right. But you see what I'm saying? Like, knock it off. Don't act like, 
you're not somebody holier than thou. Yeah, that you are holier than thou like everybody has flaws that's part of the yin and yang the positive and negative that exists within all things and whatever justice would have came to him through the justice system he would have deserved every bit of it right if but he, it wasn't gonna be if death he is in fact the death penalty was not on the table if he is in fact because guilty uh, you know if he was found guilty he would have served his punishment accordingly but he didn't even he didn't get the opportunity to to you know serve his punishment he didn't even get the opportunity to redeem himself like people don't people oh y'all forgot malcolm x was a pimp before he became malcolm x and at the, like, you know it's at, like li- like li- like in real life come on guys we're talking yeah, you about you gotta give people time to transform exactly and also it's like let's not forget he wasn't killed for that he was he was robbed. Yes. And he you know robbed, what I mean? He, he was, was murdered he in the was, commission of a crime. Exactly. This is some first he, 48 shit. He right was here. robbed for some shit he worked hard for. And nobody deserves that at right. the end of the day. Well, let's see if they solve the crime like the first 48. You know what I mean? Because it seems like a, a lot of rappers can get killed and mysteriously, you know, it's never solved yet. You know, I've watched the first 48 and it seemed like they be solving a lot of them motherfuckers in the first 48 because oh, motherfuckers yeah. be telling. So all your motherfuckers with with cell phones and all that type of shit, like I'm sure y'all seen some shit and don't act like you snitching because you're not working unless you was a, a Cody with this motherfucker who did it. You're not snitching. So go ahead. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> do the work for yeah, do the work for the police. You love it anyway. Um. So listen, when we come back, we're going to talk about more fuck shit that's going on out here. Um, your boy Trump is locking up the babies, okay, which is some fucking bullshit. But we're not going to keep the whole show a downer because then we oh, also, yes. we're also going to get into talking about this Nas album. Because this has been a great month for adult music. What? Me, for, uh, yo. The, Over 40. Uh, the adult rappers is are running shit are right, popping right now. right now. <laughs> so listen, when we get back, we're going to get into all of that. Um, you know what I mean? Godcast. Peace. 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 It's the absence of all confusion. Neither we stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today. Hey, yo, peace. Welcome back to the United Mean Godcast, Lord Jamal. Digga, digga. And we are back. We talking about this motherfucker Trump. And he putting the babies in jail. Yeah. What the fuck's that all about? I don't know. I think, uh, well, looks like modern day slavery to me. Modern day slavery, huh? Yeah. Wasn't that part of the practice of slavery to separate the children Absolutely. From the parents, mm-hmm. send them off to one plantation and mm-hmm. just to instill more terror and, and, and make things more precarious mm-hmm. and, and just upend the whole fucking situation of the family, make things unstable. Yeah. But apparently he's reversed it. So now they'll be detained together. First Thanks, of all, Trump. did you see, did y'all see the picture of the detainee center harold put that up for us real quick they got these people on f- the floor with like looks like tin foil blankets or some shit like that inside what appears to be some sort of you know maybe a gymnasium but then cages mm-hmm. inside mm-hmm. i mean they're already inside mm-hmm what the fuck are the... It looks like a dog kennel or some crazy shit. Like, like... Like, how inhumane... Do and you, they do got you, the baby. Do you have to be to, to like, enforce this practice? Right. They got the babies mm-hmm. doing this. But now, it seems like what people were fighting for was the fact that they were separated. Like... That's not enough. Like, like, how about the treatment of these people? The fact that they're being put into base, base, basically makeshift kennels. 
uh, made for humans. Like now they'll just be together as a family in the in the kennel. Well, I mean, we've seen Trump's behavior and heard his rhetoric in regards to people outside of his likeness. Um, hate, you know, people of Haiti, are shit, you know, <laughs> Haiti's a shithole country. Mexicans are hombre, bad hombres. I, I mean, we've heard this. We've heard this from him. Like we, we already know. It's like we don't have to figure it out. We, we, he tweets it <laughs> every day. Like how he feels, what he thinks about people other than rich white people. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna say, I can't say I'm surprised, but I am appalled that the people around him, like the the you know the Congress, Senate, just the people that that have to yay or nay the shit he does you know i'm i'm just amazed how far shit goes before like anybody around him steps in i guess when they try they get fired like every time like every day there's a new cabinet member getting fired or replaced so it's it's crazy in a way i mean i'm not really amazed because i understand the the animal and the beast that we're dealing with like you know at one time, it was, I guess it was good for America to be more hypocritical and act one way, but then do something else. Now, it's all about transparency. Transparency and just being who the fuck you really are. Yeah. Like, 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 you know what I mean? If you're, like, a ra- if you're a racist, you could be, now's the time, you could be a proud racist. Okay, like, it's all about living your truth and your true self you see what i'm saying that's the themes they throwing out there and for them their true selves and their truth is is divine evil you know what i mean to be fucking evil like like yeah that that's that's just simple that's that's just simply what it is and it's fucking you know so i'm not surprised by a lot of the shit um, I guess we're just not used to it because we came up in a time where it was more. It was more overt. They were trying to hide it. You see, like we were born. At I mean, the it, you time. mean it wasn't as overt. Yeah, it wasn't as overt. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we were born, you know, in in that '60s area. Well, I was in the late '60s, mm-hmm. early '70s for you. Right. But still, that was a time when things were changing. Like we from, were on we were on the heels of civil rights, and we had you know we we had more positive uh, leaders and and role models really stand you know standing up for right. shit. Um, and we had it, and that was not to cut you off, but that no, was a not. time when, you know. It wasn't a good look for racist white people. You know what I mean? Right. It started to be like, you know what? Y'all might need to tone that shit down. You know, we don't fuck with blacks, but let's just act like we fuck with them. You know what I mean? So by the time we got into the 80s and the 90s, you know, they were in full swing of like acting like they really fucked with black people but, even though they but didn't they, fuck but they, with black but they people. were secretly shoveling drugs in the community to break us down absolutely and trying to aids all of this type of shit they're trying to they were trying to do uh setting up policies to separate the family all of that type of shit a woman reaganomics get, yeah a woman can get welfare if the man is in the house all that type of shit um so yeah but now we're at listen We're tired. They're tired. They're tired of all that fakery and why? Why do it? For what? Who are they trying to appease anymore? Like, like, there's not even a lot of, you know, real black organizations out there with any kind of clout that's going to fucking do anything. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and they're, and and they're act they're actually looking at us like listen to their music, listen to they're all you know. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. They're all niggers and thoughts anyway and shit. At least at least at that time it was fight the power coming on midday. Exactly. Like, like so be, they have, be easy. We're reading books. Shut them down. Shut them. Shut them yeah. down. Okay. So it's like the fact that there's none of that right now. Really, there's no you know. On the main stage, really. On the main stage. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, fuck you. 
We don't have to fucking hide this shit no more. You know what? We racist and we fucking proud of it. Matter of fact, let's fucking elect a motherfucker who really, you know, lets his nuts hang like a real fucking And if you got something to say, we'll racist. shoot you. Huh? I said, and if you got something to say, we'll shoot Come you. Come on, because we, we down with the NRA. That's our fucking shit. Like, you know what I mean? That's American as fucking apple pie. Just as, like, racism is as American as fucking apple pie. Um... Yeah, but but this just shows you like the the inhumane, and then for America to like to go to other countries and act like you're some human rights activist, like it's fucking laughable. Like, look at the shit you're doing, but then you're gonna act like oh, that's why these these other countries oh, they they clown us. Look what they're doing to their people. We have to go in there and stop it. They're torturing their own people. Get the fuck out of here, man! Like, shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. Super crazy. What 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 are we moving on to? Where are we at? Fuck him. Let's talk about some music. Okay, you want to talk about some music? Let's talk about some music. We had a lot of dope albums drop this month. A uh, lot lot of grown up music. Well, I mean, the uh, Push T gave us the rollout. Push T. I uh I was pleasantly surprised when I heard some of that. Push a T music, and I'm talking beat wise. You know, there's all Yo, this. Kanye been in his bag, listen, and was all, all his crazy. All this talk about Kanye, and yes, with all the antics, and you know, we haven't heard from a lot from him in a while, and he's been known to experiment with some shit that you know, mm -hmm. motherfuckers is not really fucking with. But I've heard quite a few beats on quite a few projects right now that have touched me you know what i mean emotionally like and i'm like yeah that's dope that's yeah. hip-hop yo that's yeah. what the fuck i'm talking yeah, about yeah he right been there. in his bag and and it's crazy because again with social media and, and particularly twitter but like you know if you tweet some like oh yeah the nas album because nas album it it, it leaked it went away, and then for like a day, everybody was like, what What happened to the Nas album? And then it was back up, so I don't know if that was like a ploy or maybe just like it, somebody leaked it too soon because they had the listening party in Queens. They they shut the whole of, of Queens Bridge down, but I got to say, you know, put, push, a st push a set it off, then, uh, then Kanye dropped. Well, then what do we feel about, first of all, these are all Kanye-produced albums. Each one of them has seven songs. Now, how do we feel about this seven song theory? Like, does it feel like enough? Does it feel like incomplete thoughts? What, what, what do you think? Well, I think nowadays, being that we are living in such a microwave generation and people's attention spans are really that short, mm. I think seven is dope because you'll listen to, first of all, seven is a divine number. God. And you, you know, you can pop in one of these projects and it will repeat about two, three times before you realize like, oh, snap, you know, now I'm listening to it over and over again, which is doper than like, OK, what's next? You know, skip, skip, skip. Like, I'm one of those less is more people. Like, I, I love the shortness. I mean, I believe the technical term for it is an EP. But if we're calling them albums, fine. I mean, aside from the Kanye stuff, hey. Well, the EP was five songs back in the days, really. Right. That and and, it got, and then it got stretched to seven. Okay. Because I, I see people, you know, say that. So between five and seven is, like, the margin between... uh. EP and album, but aside from Kanye stuff, now let's Black Thought. Black Thought got a got a scorcher. Nah, I didn't hear that. Oh, Black Thought got a scorcher out really? here, produced by Knife Wonder. Okay, hot, start to finish, like definitely, you know, one of my top five uh, soloists. And um, let's see, we have J and and B that dropped an album, and I think it's cute. Like I think that I know they're touring right now. They're having fun together. It's like we're on top of the world. We can do whatever the fuck they want. Right. Um, personally, I felt like 
you know, you had they came to this arc with you had Beyonce with Lemonade, you had Jay Z with the four four four. It's like they in their they're in their super grown up bag now. Right, meaningful music and And then they come together and they're just kinda like turned up with all of these like future inspired slash Migo inspired records and I guess they're, you know, I guess they're having fun. I'm personally, I don't, I don't love it. I don't want it. That's not what I personally want to hear from um, Beyonce and Jay-Z. I feel like, you know, y'all went from being super adults to like, I don't know. Y'all just came together and became little kids again. Right. So, it, you know, it was a little, it was a weird direction for me right. to, to digest. But um, Beyonce's rhyming. <laughs> Beyonce's spitting. <laughs> I didn't hear the whole shit, but I heard that song "Ape Shit," and yeah, she was like, she was Be- going Beyonce- off on that one. Be- Be- yeah, Beyonce's going. It- it's 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 cra- it's strange when they collaborate to me because sometimes I always feel like, okay, Beyonce's in her bag. Jay Z sounds off on this one, or it-, it it to me, if I feel like whenever they they come together, like somebody seems like they're out of their element it's either going to be beyonce you know going in the the super ratchet direction or it's jay-z being in the like sounding married direction like i i I don't know like they 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 do uh they have a weird uh chemistry on on music you know in music together for me i i personally prefer them separately with music but i mean the album's right. cute. i mean they got a couple together that no no I, like. I mean you know they but got yeah, some, they got some mainly, joints but it's like their brands are just so separate like uh, uh, not that and, and i don't mean their business acumen i mean when i look at beyonce i think debutante i think you know uh uh southern bell and then you know jay-z is like this this from NYC. And well, that's the yin and the yang. That's the that's the that's the balance. It's like so when they come together, it's like I don't know. Beyonce comes like this ratchet New York chick or something, and, or and then Jay Z becomes like this. It's like every this family countryman. I don't know. It, sometimes every, it throws me off. Every good girl wants a bad guy, of course, to be good for them. Of course. And then every bad every, guy wants a good girl to be, to be bad, bad for, for them. them. Hey, he, hey, in, in the words of the great prophet Jay-Z, I just want a wife to fuck me like a prostitute. Okay. <laughs> I hear you, Jay. You see what I'm saying? I hear you. <laughs> um, but just don't fuck everybody else like a prostitute. <laughs> I um, like how you put that. That was very well put. Yeah. Um, I didn't make that up. I can't take credit for it, okay. but I did hear that somewhere. No, that, that makes it, all that yeah. that that now when you see when you put it in that context, now I can actually I can listen to their album with a different appreciation because I, I guess depending on where you're at and location. Well, no, you know. I got to agree with what you're saying. Like when I heard that ape shit, you know, it's like uh, you can't help but like do that little turn up type yeah, of move. But it's like, like at the same time, yes. Do I want to hear that from Beyonce right, and Jay Z? Right. No. That, see, and that's that. No. And that I don't. And that that was my that was my initial take. You know, my first listen. I, first of all, I want to hear Jay Z on beats. You know, more like what I heard, like. Push Kanye shit. Like yeah. I want to know. Can I can I tell you something? Now, now, that shit right there from Pusha, that sound like some shit that he would have gave to Jay Z. But so, since they feuding right now, I'm it's so like, you mad know what? that they're feuding. I'm gonna give that shit to fucking Pusha. Fuck you, Jay. Yo, I honestly feel in my heart of hearts that Kanye and Jay Z together, they really bring the best out of each other. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I don't think I I've, swear I could hear Jay on that song all day. What's the name of that song? Do you remember? That Pusha T. These song are the right games there. we play. That yeah. shit right I, I'm like, there? I know, I know the song word for word. I don't, I don't shit right know the here? song titles. This yeah. shit right here? That shit is dope. I, I want to say it's called Games We Play. That's the super kind of chronic cryptolite shit. Yeah, that, that shit is hard body. That's that Yo, Pusha's, shit I'm Pusha's talking about. tracks are hard body. I'm fucking with Yo, that. Yo, Cuddy, uh, shouts out Kid Cuddy, who also, you know, dropped another 
Games we play. Games we play, yeah. That shit right there. Cuddy, Cuddy dropped a, 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 a Kanye produced track. Well, actually, it's it's Cuddy and Kanye together. It's like a joint album. Now, and even it, imagine Beyonce was singing on that Games We Play and, and, and Jay-Z rhyming on that type. Now, I'd want to hear an album like that. Now, you see I, what I'm saying? You know what? And and I believe that that's what it is. I don't want to hear them turned up. Like, I don't mind them on some, some hip- real I shit. I don't mind them on some hip hop yes. shit. I don't want to hear them turned up. Especially something dirty like that? That's 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 the issue that I have. But give us something like that, bro. I know y'all got it in. You know what I mean? And that, Fuck all this and, young boy and shit. And that could possibly, I was going to say, that could possibly be our bias because I'm pretty sure they're, they're probably making a smash on, you know, oh. on radio and commercial but absolutely we as boom baptist hip hoppers yeah if y'all gonna do that you know do it this way <laughs> word that's real that's that's my critique for that so album. so pusha comes pusha comes then pusha sets it off then it was uh who kanye came next then kanye came haven't heard it yet um kanye <laughs> I'm going to say... Hey, y'all got to pay me to fucking listen to this <laughs> shit like, like it's a job or else I'm going to listen to it and I fucking get around to it. Go ahead. And pl- you know what? But that's, but that's a good ideology because when you, when you listen to it, when everybody else is listening to it and commentating, then you kind of get you know marred with everybody else's opinion like you gotta be i'll get to it you gotta be in your own space and and that's you know that now for nas's album i jumped on it immediately just because i'm a nas stan like nas is everything well i listened to nas because i knew we were going to talk about nas right and plus nas is my virgo brother it did take me a minute to get around the kid cuddy but but i i can i can that's another one that I, i i mean i can't sit here and say that I was ever a big Kid Cudi fan. Like, I might know one of his songs, the, the most famous one, whichever that. Lonely one. Stoner. Yes. <laughs> day and night. Yeah. It's going that Lonely Stoner guy's friend of mine at night. That's the only one I know. Um, <laughs> but I hear he's a talented dude and he, he works is. with Kanye and all of that. I got nothing against him. I'm just saying I don't know his shit like well, that. Well, I will say I do think Cuddy and Kanye work well together, um, maybe even more so than Nas. I'll tell you why. I think Kanye is very unorthodox with his sampling and his beat patterns, and you almost have to be an unorthodox rapper to catch it. Um, I think Pusha... I think Pusha got the cream the cream of the crop like he was the you know he was the set it off and his is just straight pimplelicious um i think cuddy and as well as kanye's album they're both a little uh i want to say left of center so it it makes sense like i i think the the union of them two made it make sense and then when you get to Nas's album, I mean, samples, fire, dope, fire, um, rhymes, fire. I do feel like we're gonna we're gonna talk oh, more okay, about we're gonna it. Break yeah, down yeah, Nas. Yeah, because, okay, next segment. Yeah, next segment we're gonna talk about Nas's album. Okay. Not to cut you off. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, because we do. We, not we, to cut her off. I know. He's not, <laughs> we have our segmented uh, convo, so we, right. We gotta save that. For um. You. Which is similar to like these seven songs. You see what I'm saying? Like how, why people's attention spans. And I know some of y'all say, oh, I don't like when y'all chop it up. But trust me, it's working out better when we chop these segments up. So that's what the fuck we're going to do. But when we come back, we're going to not only talk about the Nas album and some of the songs that we each personally think stand out. Um... I'd also like, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but you're going to see it by the time we come back, Mm -hmm. is some of the merchandise for the Nas album, Mm. okay, that's being put out by him and Kanye, I believe, and it has some symbology that's kind of disturbing to some people. So when we get back, we're going to talk about all of that. And shouts out to J Rock from the Black Hippie Crew as well. Dropped another, uh, you know, dropped an album as well. Oh yeah! Whoa! Somebody said J Rock has a really tight album. Tight, tight. Yo, some dope shit out right now. Listen, J- June is killing it. 
Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to I'm going to do my due diligence at some point and catch up to all of this shit. But again, I don't like to ride bandwagons with motherfuckers. I like to listen to the shit when I'm ready to listen to it and have my own, you know, objective gotcha. or subjective opinion <laughs> what the fuck we talking about. When we come back, it's Nas on the United Me and Godcast. Peace. It's the absence of all confusion. United we stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today. All right, peace. Welcome back to the Not A Mean God cast. I am Lord Jamal. And I'm Digga Digga. And uh, we back with this... Uh, Being all subjective and shit. All subjective and shit. <laughs> talking about Nick's albums. In this third segment. And this particular segment, I want to talk about Nas. Now, first of all... Um, damn, I said I was going to show you something. And we just jumped right into it. So let me show it to you this way. If this thing keeps trying to sign me into Wi-Fi. Um, here we go. So just take a look at this. Okay. That's a sweatshirt. That's part of the... Merchandise for Nas's album. So now I'll let you soak that in for a second. Maybe we'll talk about the music first and then talk about some of that right there. Okay. Because I don't know if you fully. This is interesting. Yeah. Understanding what's being seen right there. Um, I mean. the. Or do you want to talk about this like the, right the, now? The sword going through the pyramid looks crazy as hell. I. I well, see, this is all, a lot of that is like Masonic symbolism. Okay. You know, some will say, you know, Moorish symbolism as well. Okay. Um, but those two handshaking, that's a Masonic handshake. Okay. You know, the crescent moon and the star. Right. You know, that's usually something, you'll usually see that crescent moon and the star turned on its back uh, with the sword over it as an emblem of justice. Okay. Um, you know, and that sword was used in Muhammad's time um, and was basically put there for those who went under the study, like a Masonic study. If you were to reveal any of these secrets, your head would be taken off by the sword. Oh, wow. um, okay. You know, the pyramid, you know, the building of, of man's mind and all. These are There's a lot of Masonic symbolism within that that's that circle seven um the seven with the circle that's like that comes from like the moorish the moorish circle seven quran um which is i guess slightly different from the normal holy quran you know that traditional muslims <coughs> study that quran is spelled with the q uh i believe q u a r a n where this is spelled K-O-R-A-N. Um, and this was used by noble Drew Ali and his followers. Um, so I don't know the full meaning. And I've never seen like the sword chopped into a pyramid like that before. Yeah, so that's, I, that's the first thing. That yeah, I don't even mean. fully understand everything that's trying to be said but symbolism symbolism is used to speak to certain parts of the subconscious that's where a lot of symbols have meaning within our subconscious so to use symbolism in this kind of way you know and controversial with what some people would say controversial esoteric symbolism you know it's interesting. Uh, I'd like a little more clarification from my brother, if okay. possible, you know, as far as. So are, are people taking, is it 
deemed defensive because I, 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 I'll be honest, like I'm totally. I know you. You seem like, like you don't. I'm, you I'm were like, like deer in the head, I'm, like I don't know I'm, what. I'm letting you. I don't take know what none of this shit me. Cut me off. I'm just gonna sit here eat my food. You can take the entire lead on this one. Um, you know, I think certain people, you know, that have knowledge, a, a, a degree of knowledge that I have, are looking at this slightly alarmed. You know. But okay. it's almost, you know, could it be a form of trolling, like like conscious trolling? You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of people will see those symbols and automatically say Illuminati. You understand what I'm right. saying? Oh, shit, Nas is down with the Illuminati. You know, right. or that's, he's... A, that's he's, what the sheeple will say. Yeah, he's down with the Masons, or you know, but then some people say, no, those are Moorish symbols. Da, 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 da. I would just like clarification. I'm giving you... Certain knowledge that I have of these symbols. Okay. Um, and they apply to all of the above of what I just talked about. Okay. I would just like to understand where he was. Why? Going, yeah. Where, well, was where my brother that. was coming from with I mean, that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you know, Nas, Nasir, you know, the benefit of a doubt. Yes. And But and, he's working with, with your boy too now. You see what I'm saying? So, so your man trying to be king of controversy you know say listen i know you might feel funny about but, but trust me we put a shirt out with all those symbols that's gonna be that shit and we do and we do know he's you know he he's not he's not above uh artwork theatrics as we saw with the pusher cover so. thank you and uh, there's a lot of that um so yeah i'm just well, it's something we need to talk about. Trust me, it's going to be in the comments. And okay. people, if I didn't bring this up, oh, they, they would have been like, how bring... the fuck did Lord Jamal talk about a Nas's album? Somebody's and he didn't talk about the, the symbolism comments. of that merchandise. Oh, yeah. Somebody, well, somebody's definitely breaking it down in the comments. They were correcting us all left and right. It's Schooly D, not Spoonie G. You, how you forget MOP? How you forget? I, like, Look, man, everybody from the 90s was fresh. You had to be hot to get on. So, And we ain't going to sit here and be able <laughs> to. We're not computers. We're not going to be able to remember every single Shout out Ultramatic MCs. Shout Ultra out Magnetic. Ultra Magnetic. I said Ultra Magnet. What I, did I just say Ultra you, you Magnet? Said, hey, something like that. <laughs> say Ultra Magnet? God damn, I'm sorry. Ultra Magnetic. Ultra. <laughs> damn it. Shout them all out. Everybody. Ultra Magnetic MC. I said Ultra Magnetic. Cool Keith said G. Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. And the crew. Okay. So anyway, that being said about the symbolism. Okay. And thank you for bringing that to my attention. Yeah. Well, you know, people need and and listen, y'all look these symbols up yourself. See, a lot of times, I think people want to just be delivered all the answers to some shit like. A lot of times it's like sparking your knowledge. Now oh, yeah. you do the fucking oh, I research. Have, like, I have no problem. I'm not going to sit here and research. give you all the fucking answers to some shit, but I will put you down the path of certain things. And and now you do your I'm due diligence. I'm definitely going to look that up. You do your due diligence yeah. if you would really want to know. I would really want to know because I didn't even know that was a thing going on. I'm just like me. I'm one of those people like I'm here for the music, people's antics and things. Listen, I, I try, I really try to that. Somebody sent that to me that. immediately. Look at look at Nas's um, merchandise with, with Kanye. And I was just like, ooh, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, mmm. Like what struck me immediately was that Masonic, you know, handshake going on now, see i, I, I like, see I, I thought that was like just some ebony and ivory thing. right see no that's a that's a yeah that's esoteric shit right there that's okay. a, that was a masonic handshake being okay. shown on in that picture um also if you notice it looks like the moon first of all it's facing a different way than i'm usually used to seeing it because on the Nation of Islam flag and on the 5% Nation flag, that crescent moon is facing in the other direction. Mm -hmm. um, so they got it facing in this direction. Um, but it also seems to be like there's a crack or something at the bottom of the moon. And trust me, every little thing in, in that, I'm sure, means something. Mm -hmm. And so I would just like to get uh, uh, an official breakdown of it, you know. 
Well, good or bad, whether you know, whatever the real breakdown of it is, I would like to get an official one. Maybe so it's not, not a lot of it. assuming right. going on. But anyway, let's talk about the music. Oh, yeah. This is an album that I actually did hear. And, you know, there's definitely some standout shit on here. Oh, yeah. Like, there's some shit that when I heard it, I'm just like, hmm. Kanye got in his fucking bag. He really was no. sam- uh, chopping samples in a sunken place. And that might have been a good place for him to be. For like four albums. Yo. Um, all right, let's get into it real quick. I mean, I have, for me, what, the seven songs? So three of the songs are really stand out for me. Okay. Now, I'm going to say, for me, number one, only because the initial guttural response that came from me when I heard it has to be white label. Mm, 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 white mm, label I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm is gonna, hard as yes, fuck. I'm gonna have to the way it. that shit is sampled yeah. and the just the, the, the instruments in that motherfucker. Yeah. Yo, that shit Yo, that's the one that just had me like, uh, like some hip hop breaking neck. And if you listen to it, it's just the production is so stripped down. There is no drums over it or nothing yep. like that and all this other bullshit. But the sample and the unorthodox way that it's put together, you know, that joint right there is definitely stand out. You know, right now, and this is only hearing the album one time, that's probably would be my number one. Okay. Um, the next one probably would be that Adam and Eve joint. Mm, okay. okay. Adam and Eve, crazy. Um, the joint with Puff, not for the radio. Mm. I think they're scared of it. Actually, I thought that was Khalees singing that at first. I was like, oh, snap. But it is. Uh... That not for the radio is hard. Mm-hmm. Um even though they're trying to do a hate me now kind of revisited mm-hmm. type of thing, but I, I'm it digging works. it. I'm it digging works. it. Yes, yes, it does work because they're not biting like then, it, you and, know what I mean. And and they're addressing uh, brothers getting shot, and and this is you know this took it back to what we know Kanye to do, and and you know however far we feel like he took it or he's taking it with the Trump and the MAGA and everything. I always say, yo, I'm. I'm not writing him off until I get the music because what he does in the music always represents and reflects that ideology. So, yeah, yeah, the same guy running around, you know, campaigning Trump with MAGA hats is in a record talking about uh, cop shooting niggas. Well, <laughs> well, and now that you say Think that, that cop shooting niggas. You know, I, I want to kind of talk about that song, Cop Shot the Kid, because that's one of my favorites. You know, well, upon initially hearing that song, because that's one of the first songs I heard off the album, and, like they were playing it, I was just hearing it around. I don't know how to feel about that song at first. Like mm-hmm. something about the beat, you know, just that repetitive Cop Shot the Kid, Cop, Cop Shot the Kid. Um... I, I wasn't sure. It's kind of growing on me now. Like, like, it's definitely growing, man. I I like Kanye's verse on. I see what it is like, but mm-hmm. that one is a little unorthodox, and I'm glad there's no more like that. Let's just put it that way. Like, it's a song like that that almost had me scared for Kanye producing this album. You understand what I'm saying? Because you expect a certain, you know, you you have a certain standard for Nas. Well, right. And mm-hmm. like I said previously, I wasn't sure which Kanye was going to show up to the game. You see, you got your old school sampling Kanye dope, and then you got your 808 and Heartbreaks Kanye. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which one was going to show up to the game? There's, 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 there's the Kanye that does just enough. And then there's a Kanye that sometimes does too much. Like, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm talking production-wise. 
Um, I'm going to say I'm now that too much that you just said. Mm -hmm. I'm going to think I'm going to say that could possibly apply to his album and the album he has with Cuddy Mm. because they, you know, they are those artists that are not scared to, you know, go outside of the box and and go left of center and take it there. I feel like with Nas. Come with that poopity scoop. I feel like yo, that sample is fire. I didn't Listen, hear it yet. Outside, outside of him poopity scooping, the actual sample, yo, he, if he would have put that <laughs> on his album, he would have killed it. Outside of him poopity scooping, right. okay. that beat, I still didn't hear the poopity. That scoop. beat is hard. You right here? We, we gonna pull it up. Okay. Uh, whoop, whoop, did he scoop? Whoop, did he scoop poop? <laughs> uh, but um, the. Pusha album and Nas album, like, see, those are the type of artists that are, like, straightforward, cutthroat MCs. So I think his more stripped-down, you know, sample formula works best in that regard. But with, you know, with with Cuddy and himself and, and probably even Tiana who's coming next which i can't wait because i'm i'm hearing all sorts of crazy about her shit really so, yeah I, I i heard she's you know i heard she's gonna be the close out like, is this her boom. first album um Has she ever had an album before i want to say i feel like she's put music out i don't know if she's ever had an I think, album i think this might actually be her debut album you know what a lot of people don't even remember that she she actually came in the game rhyming like she had she a fuck with Pharrell and all. Yeah, that. she had a joint which is still like one of my uh, shits. Traffic stop with Pharrell. That shit was hard. Yeah. So like when I mention rapping, I, I say like, is she singing or rapping? People look at me like I'm crazy. Like when did she ever rap? Like yeah, she used to rap. But um, but you know, getting back to getting back to Nas. Um, I love it. You know, Nas is my fave. Um, there's definitely some standout joints. Um, uh, I'll tell you mine. One thing I can say about a Nas album, which is something that I can appreciate with any dope hip hop artist. Like I don't gotta like everything right away. Like when I first heard the album, I was in Miami. Bonjour was my shit. Right. I'm sitting, you know, I got the fucking Cuban cigar on the, you know, on the fucking terrace of the Fountain Blue. Like, ah, bonjour. And I swear, where you hear something sometimes matters. Right, right. (laughs) You know, that was that shit. Then I got back home and I'm going to... Uh, uh, you know, then I, you know, then I hear a white label like, ooh, that, that, that's so gritty, grungy, Some New York, New York, York shit. shit. Exactly. Look, and then I hear, you know, and then XXX gets murdered, and now I'm sad, and then everything, and then anything, mm. I could change everything. So it's like different records was hitting me. Yeah, at, that's another good one too. At, that yeah, that, that's, that's that's like one that. of my favorites uh-huh. too. Like you know, it, it's it's one of those things where you can listen to it a week from now, a month. Like it's not microwavable. It's not gonna just fade to black. Like. A month from now, I'm going to be feeling some other type of way. And some simple things is going to, you know, appeal to me. And that's that's one of the things I always loved about Nas and and and, and the music that he makes. Like he's always he's bound to to give you a classic. Now, I was going to say, are there instant classics on here? Um, is there is, part of me when I mean by classic songs like, or, or yeah, songs his, like so are there instant classics like a song on here that. Definitely, it's going to be a staple in hip hop, and we'll probably hear it twenty years from now, type of thing. I would, I honestly wouldn't be able to answer that question for about a month. Mm. I would need to know, like, I would need to know a month, like, because now a month later, I'm still bumping Black Thoughts EP. So yeah, we know that, like, that's gonna. Please check that out. Like, that's gonna be a classic. Um, you know, there are certain albums that right now that we've talked about months ago that I'm still listening to. I'm still listening to Rock Marcy's album. You know, I, I Bohemian Grove. <laughs> exactly. You know, um, you know, there are certain people's albums that was dope in that moment, and you know, I'm not necessarily racing to hear them again. So, right. um, I w- I would have to, you know, I would have to revisit that in I'd say about a month. But right now I can't get enough. I I did take a little break cuz I I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to burn it out too fast. But as different events happen on a day-to-day basis, I get the tendency to want to hear, you know, a certain song. 
Well, a lot of times I feel like I've been able to influence certain shit just with my mind. Mm. Like, like it seems like I'll like a song and I don't have to talk about it, but it that song will start going. So right now, I would like to see White Label <laughs> like yeah. just just get to be a bigger song. Like do a video for that one, Nas. Trust me, that White Label is hard. Ill, and like, make a hard video you, for you. You nasty Nas, nah, yeah. Matic on May, that. Yeah, shit. go to the bridge and and get all the. You know what I mean? I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've seen some critiques about like Nas's flow on this album. Like maybe you know a couple couple people feel like he ain't in the in the pocket like he normally is. I, I think. Sometimes we might have a tendency to overanalyze. I, I I think that Kanye's you know sound and style of production you know isn't necessarily the obvious fit for a Nas, but there's also a beauty in that as well because you know Nas is always gonna be that eloquent MC. And hey, I always say from the rip, I'm waiting for the Kanye music. I'm glad you ain't let me down, bro. Well, you know what's funny? My boy Vlad is fucking, you know, nothing on himself right now because <laughs> fucking uh, Nas basically responded to Vlad. Oh, wow. Vlad had said, called Nas one of the worst beat pickers. And on one of these songs. Oh, I can tell. Well, he, the last one, Simple Things. Simple he's, Things. He's he responds to Vlad's yeah. comment about his beat, his beat picking, his, right. his, you know, his choice in women. Like, oh yeah, right. he, you know, he definitely covered. A Shout out to Vlad. You got, you got legends in the game <laughs> responding to you, Kiko. That's what's up. He definitely, you know, again, I, I believe his arc is cemented. Um, I'm happy that someone of that caliber, you know, that's been in the game this long, legendary, is still putting it down in 2018. And again. You know, not to not to not to be Dick Riding Kanye. Say what you want about him. He is one of the last few that continues to promote boom bap on a mainstream level. Mm. And for that reason, I will always fuck with him. That's what's up. For some reason, I just want to say because I heard this coming here. Shout out to fucking DJ Premier, he has a remix for the 1985 of J. Cole. Ooh. And he did like a boom bap type of remix. This shit fucking hard. Y'all need to check that shit out. Let's go. I got some good advice, never quit torn. Cause that's the way we eat here in this rap game. I'm fucking with your funky little rap name. I hear your music and I know that rap's change. A bunch of folks will say that that's a bad thing. And once again, go check out my man, LL, Rock the Bells Radio, Channel 43 on Sirius Radio, because I really fucking fuck with that channel. I hear there's a Primo and Nas album coming. Really? Yeah. That'll be nice. I'm, de now, I'm that definitely... Sounds that sounds like... Now, that sounds, that sounds more, you know... What we're looking for. <laughs> Gelling yes. with with Nas. And, I, and, and and where somebody could really be in the pocket because right. that's his lane. Like that's, This is like Nas almost experimenting right. a little bit, but, pre, but doing primo, a great job with right. the experimentation. And that, that's how I feel. But, yes. that, but definitely Primo fits Nas's cadence more. Well, listen, Queen, I could sit here and talk to you. We for, could talk hip hop forever, yo. Days and days <laughs> and days. Um... Shit, next week we're gonna have some MCs come on up here oh, and get on this fucking mic. I got some serious spitters coming up here. Okay. Um, so stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a little Philly special. Maybe oh yeah. We'll, maybe we'll get a little Maxes in the house. I don't know. We love Philly. Ooh, good, yes. <laughs> if good. If you're good, maybe I'll get us some Maxes brought up to us. Yay. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, man, another great one. Um, he was so polite this week. He said, "Excuse me, pardon me, pardon so, self, sorry, sister. sister. Didn't mean to cut you off. Y'all just scared him. Pardon <laughs> self, sister. I didn't mean to cut you off. Y'all just scared him into being nice to me. <laughs> Coldly polite. They may be extremely keen to please those they're seeing. They obey all the rules of etiquette. They offer their guests drinks, ask them questions about their journey, suggest they might want a little more gravy, remark on the interest of a recent prize-winning novel." <laughs> I'd allow you to continue your thought. <laughs> and another thing about female rappers. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, listen. 
Before we go, if you enjoy the production value of the show, if you enjoy, you know, the, 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 the way we shoot it, the way it sounds. If you enjoy you my know, shoulders. You out. enjoy those sexy shoulders <laughs> of hers and, and just the real hip hop conversation and us not bringing you the bullshit that everybody else brings. Um, please donate to the show through cash.me slash dollar sign you know what I mean patreon.com slash you know what I mean or through you know what I mean dot com slash support um, we got a lot of people that work behind the scenes um, every week diligently to bring this to you in a timely fashion some of y'all got spoiled because you know I was putting these shits out 7 a.m. Mm. you know on the, like clockwork but there was a couple of times when you know hey do do whatever we might get the, the editor the was edit. in Miami we too. Might have got the edit a little <laughs> late, and and then I got to send it to my man Truly Zambian. Shout out Truly Zambian, who does the, uh, you know, the title, the synopsis, and the timestamps. But he's in London, so there's that oh, wow. five hour difference. Oh, we global. So yeah, I got to shoot that to him, and then you know, so it's just all of that, and I don't like to put it up until it's complete. So, you know what? To really get this shit like a well-oiled machine, we need some grease, motherfuckers. So, let's get this shit. Uh, we want to keep this shit working like a well-oiled machine. So, please, donate to one of those, uh, you know, links on the screen. And it is much appreciated. So, again, for the United Mean Godcast, I am Lord Jamal. And I'm Digga Digga. Peace. Stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today.